Hello, Billy Artist here, back with a sports badge drawing lesson, and today we're doing Crew Alexander. It's the third of my hometown local area football teams. We did before Stoke City, Port Vale, and now we're doing Crew Alexander, and then we'll go on and we'll do more of the Premier League and other football clubs and other sports clubs as well, and logos and badges and all kinds of things. And this is what we're aiming to do in my How to Draw lessons. Now, these are done using very simple techniques and equipment. But before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when new how to draw videos are coming. But again, I use the simple techniques. So I've just got some pencils from Poundland. Again, some felt tip pens from Poundland. And I've got a set of cheap felt tip pens coming from uh, the internet because we're all in lockdown now. I also have an old set of pencils. These are, blimey, 20 odd years old. Uh, so I could also use these. I use these in the uh, Incredibles videos. How to draw the Incredibles. Now, again, if you do check out in the links, there are in the cards, there are uh, links to my How to Draw Anything playlist. There's more than 120 odd lessons on there now. And they cover everything from portraits right the way through to basic cartoon characters and these kind of things. And it's great to do. And I love encouraging you because using these basic techniques, how to draw anything part one, you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house or anything else. That's what I say. And it's just a great way to learn the techniques and draw something that you want to draw. Now, again, I've done these logos. We have also done we have the Harry Potter playlist. And again, there's portraits in there. You'll see some of the portraits in a second. Here we have Hogwarts itself. We have Gryffindor. We have Slytherin. We have Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. And I also did Ollivander's ones. Now there is also Harry, Ron, Hermione, Lord Voldemort, Dumbledore, old and young. We've got another of the older Dumbledores to do later. Now, Snape, Malfoy, lots lots and lots and lots in the how to draw harry potter playlist but again i do say that we do these portraits so here we have ariana grande and queen Bob from the trolls movie again the same techniques are used all the time and that's why i really love encouraging you all with your drawing and i want you during this lockdown and ever after to enjoy your drawing and it's just a joy to get you to see what you can do with a simple pencil. Again, use the hashtag drawing with Billy, check out stuff on social media and people have been tagging me and doing all kinds of drawings. You know, there's Billy Eilish as well and other people that you can actually draw. And I'm going to be adding more and more, but these are very simple techniques. So I'm just going to move Queen Barb and Ariana. Just putting them down carefully behind me. Now here we have an A4 piece of paper, just smooth white paper. Uh, for the portraits, I do use cartridge paper just because I like the tooth on it. But this is nice because it's smooth. Now I've put this grid on, check the banner. For the dimensions, A4 is 210 millimeters across by 297 down. That's 21 centimeters by 29.7. Again, the measurements are in this banner for you to put them in. The center line is 105. So again, there you've got 10 centimeters, 105 is halfway in. And you can see, there we are, from the edge of the paper. It's right, the paper's white on, it's white on white paper. It's hard to see the edge. So there we have the center line. And you mark it up and this creates the grid. I draw these lines on and also the underdrawing lines a lot darker. You don't have to draw them on as dark as I do because I need you to see this. If I drew on lighter, you wouldn't see them. But if you want it to, you know, look nice later, easier to rub out the construction lines, that's why you draw them on lighter. So now we're going to get on and draw our Crew Alexander Football Club badge. And here we're going to start with the Norris pencil. I normally use a 2B pencil. Uh, I use 2B, 4B, 8B, 2H and 6H. But because we're all working from home, uh, I'm going to use the school Norris pencil. Now, we can see here that we've basically got a giant rectangle. So all the way around the edge, 
and we can see the point at the bottom and then down this side I'm just drawing a very large rectangle and that's kind of just above the center part of that rectangle there at the top and then we want another line in between now you can measure this with a ruler but I'm just whacking these in quickly this is going to be the edge kind of coming all the way down and we've got that point at the bottom now here we can see in the center and this is where you're going to do a bit of a dot to dot just indicating where the curve is going to come around and that's about at the two-third line two-thirds way in this section and we need again the same on this side matching this it matches on the opposite sides then where it comes down it's kind of 45 degrees across and you want a couple of marks the same and so if you come across here they should basically match 45 degrees down and then we've got a little just going to draw a rectangle but that's going to be slightly curved and then we need the curve at the top now it's a perfectly straight line I've just drawn that so as we've got the overall shape in but if you want a straight line use a ruler it really is that simple and so we can see that we've got the curve though starting just either side of the grid lines on the top so we don't need to go past there now I'm just going to draw in and I line up I can see through the ruler I line up the lines on the markings with the lines and it kind of helps to keep them level so I'm now drawing that in inside the guidelines that I actually put in now we've got this curve coming around to the edge and so I'm just going to bring the curve around gently and carefully where that is you can see we've got that line there we need to do the same on this side but it needs to match there so I need to come over a little bit more so that we are symmetrical so I'm bringing the curve round to join and again here about the third line we need where it'll curve back in so I'm going to draw the line down and then the next line down and then do the same on this side just being careful so that it's running vertically all the way down so that's our outer edge nice and quickly and now we can start the curve coming down through these points that we actually put on so it curves around comes across that grid line and then it just changes direction so you've got this little V at the bottom so it needs to go up a little bit and then you've got the curve joining it we need to match this now on this side so the curve comes down and you can see where we've got the marker where it comes through it's like so that's the outside line that's the inside line it comes down the marker is just kind of in line or just past this vertical line coming down the side and then 
do the same we've got the curve from the V just comes up goes through your little marker point your dot to dot and then curves up and now we've got the outside of the drawing completely down we can actually mark up where we want all of our text to actually fall in and this is where we're going to use a giant circle so we've got the bottom of the L there and then the top of the A is about there and this is the circle that we actually need now the bottom of the A is right through the center line and it's about there <clears throat> and so that gap there is the depth of the circle that we need to draw to actually put the text in for all the way around and we're going to use a pair of compasses because you won't have plates all the right size now that is not the center line because you can see from there to there is shorter from there to there so we've got to figure out where the gap actually is And you can also see the bottom of this kind of fleur, the laurel wreath here, the leaf at the bottom. It's a little bit below the half, so that's about the halfway point. It is about there. And the top of the leaf is about there. And that's going to be the next circle. But we need to work out where the center point is. So from the top of where the A and the L is, to the bottom of the L up there, you just get your ruler and measure. So that's just over 12 centimetres. That's 12.2 millimetres, 122 millimetres. So I'm going to put that about halfway. So as I've got the 12 and the beginning of the first marker line halfway, and then I know that's going to be on six. So the centre is there. So that's the actual centre point. I then get a pair of compasses. I can put that on the centre, bring it to there. And as you draw that line around, that's going to be your guideline for all of your text. Bring it out to the edge, the bottom of the A. And there we've got the outer line perfect for our text. Then we want the edge of the laurel wreath, which is going to be inside. And we can see about, yeah, just below the halfway line. that's the outer edge of the laurel wreath and then the inner side of the laurel wreath is going to be about there is that wider yeah a little bit wider so I'm just coming in a little bit further seems it's a little bit thicker than where the text actually is so we've now got our circles inside that we can actually use to build everything up now from the bottom of the laurel wreath to the top point there we can just draw a simple leaf shape And you can see we've got you can pretty much fit nearly the same leaf inside in between there and there and that's how we're going to in fact I've just used a strange why have I used that strange point 
because it's the bottom is it curved round who knows anyway so no just rub that out sorry about that <clears throat> let's put the griffin in so the griffin we can see the top of his head and his body and he's got his knee right on the center line so i'm just drawing a little rectangle there then we've got another little rectangle there another one coming up then we've got one two three little triangles and underneath i've got another little rectangle that's going to be his talons on the end another one there and then the rectangle there for the back of his leg now his head, top of his head is about that halfway point there. So I've got a nice little rectangle there. Rectangle for the arm coming down. Just putting a little oval for the circle. Little rectangle for his hand there. And his tummy comes through there and his back going up to his head we've got a rectangle there then we've got a nice leaf shape at the top for the top of his tail i'm just putting a long rectangle in but it's going to be curved and then you've got the back of his ankle so there we can see that we've got the shapes that are going to be the detail for our griffin. And now we've got the football above. Again, we can just curve it down. You know that's going to be a perfect circle. So you could use a coin, two pence. It's a little bit too big. You probably need like a 10 pence, something that's a little bit smaller. Or again, you could use your compasses really small. I'm just going to draw in a circle shape. And it says that's that point there is the bottom of the laurel leaf. Laurel wreath leaf. There we go. Too many owls and everything else. And we've got, so you can see the edge of the leaf is this line here. And then this bottom part is a little bit smaller so again i'm now going to draw in this leaf it was correct in the first place but this is why you do the shapes and then we can draw now these leaves you can do these with compasses but i'm just teaching you to draw quickly with shapes so you've got another leaf shape it comes outside the football now The top of the football we've got a line that comes across comes down curves either side of the leaf and this is this red line and then you've got the side parts that go off side line that goes off and then the one that goes across the top and underneath his claw now again that's going to be red we're going to use a red felt tip but i will just highlight it with black first because when if i rub that out you won't see anything now we've got all of these leaves coming around inside this circular shape going to the edge And so you've got to look and think, well, they look really, really complex. How am I going to break it down? So in this quarter section here, you can see that you've got three pairs of two leaves. So I'm just drawing a light line, which is going to be the center line all the way up. Freehand. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to, 
You can use the compasses again if you want, but I'm just drawing this in all the way around. You might not really see anything. Just a centre line that will give me the reference points that I can work to. But I've got the edge points here. Now, if you imagine the clock, you've got your cross in the centre there. So from that centre point, you can come out and you can divide up where the points are and you come out from the line there's the top point and it helps to give the direction where you're going to actually put your lines and we're going to do this as a clock all the way around so now you can see that this leaf comes out and goes to this point here and you're just drawing semicircles just a very simple leaf shape and then again the same we've got the edge of the circle that we drew so the point's got to come inside there's your first one done now the second one comes around and just comes underneath that back leaf but then the top goes out and over so there's your second leaf and you do the thi the next one up above and imagine the points go up do the curve of the leaf coming down and around and then the th again this leaf comes up you can see how it comes through the guideline. Curves, joins that leaf. Then that curves over, comes down and joins there. And then you do that leaf. And you can see how it's going to grow all the way round. Nice and simply. So again, I'm now just putting the marker points one there, one there, curve down, you've got the point, curve out, curves and joins the centre, then you've got the point above, and that comes down, you can see it joins on where the centre line is, so you curve up to the point, then curve out and come back down. Now you can come from your centre line and you can come up and there you've got another point. So you've literally just got to build the direction for all of the leaves all the way around. So now we've got these next leaves and you can see we've got one that kind of comes up and it's going to be you can see it's level with the kind of middle of the back of the griffin and then this curves out and each of these leaves is about the same size well they are the same size they're just repeated So I'm drawing that line off and then just kind of went a little bit over. So I'm just not happy with that because it's too far over on this side. And it's got to come out to the centre. And then this next one here, you can see comes up and it makes a V. And we need to come down above that one there. Now, if we come all the way up, you can see now we've got four points. And the top one joins in the middle there. 
So if we come back around, we can know that we've got one, two, three in between. They're about the same distance apart. So that's going to help us to actually place each of these lines. So we can go one, two, three, four. Now we do the same with the outside. So we've got this one, this leaf is vertical. It's just pointing straight up and it's in line with the top of the head. So we can come over and we know that that's the top point there. And then as you come around, so you've got your clock coming out. We've got the lines coming out. So we've got, that's the top point of that one. And then we've got two more in between. And we know that they got to go equal distances apart. So I've just put two marks in between, kind of equally spaced. And if you can't hear a grinder in the background, it's because everyone is in lockdown doing things at home right now. Uh, and I, I've got to have the window open. It just gets too hot. So if you can hear birds tweeting, grinders going, kids playing, it's all part of the fun of the current world that we're all living in. So now we've got this leaf. And it curves over the guideline, just comes down and then comes off to the center. And then from there, we can go to the point. The next one. Curves off, comes down. Curves off, comes to the center. The edge of this one curves to the point. This one, there we've got a way of just putting the shape in quickly. We can do the same for that top one. And then we can curve the point down from the point to the center and the top. Same for the very top. And then we've got the final one that comes out and joins on. And they're just taking your time using simple shapes. We've put the laurel wreath in. That's my electric pencil sharpener, which is a lovely fun thing to use. So now we, we've got to mirror all of these leaves on this side now. So I'm just drawing the simple shape in. Then we've got a point there, matching the point over. So that's the curve up there. Then we've got from the point down to the leaf and the curve goes up and over and comes down. And off the top of this leaf, we've got going up to the point that comes down to the center. Again, we can just follow these leaves up. This one goes up as it matches the one on this side, goes over the guideline. That curves down. And then we've got the center leaf. We need that to curve up, go to a point and that's matching this one on this side. And then we can do the full leaf out to the edge. Then we can do the next point up, little point for the top, curve the leaf down. Now this one goes just above this corner point, right above the halfway line. Curves down. And you can see you've got a little white triangle there by the grid line. Now the leaf curves over. Then here we can 
go up and we've got the point we've got to match it to this one on this side and that joins on the center line just like on that side now we can do the same with this point comes down joins the leaf curve goes up and joins now this point is the same height as this one but just to the right of the top of that point curve down curve down now again this one is pretty much vertical so we can come over that's where the top of the point is going to be and we can curve that line over comes down and then that curves and joins the wreath then we come down over match the points that curve goes down to the outside that goes to the center point then again we can just simply come over match the points and we can match the leaves curve center point curve then we come over got this one here match the line over curve to the center curve down <clears throat> And the leaf above come over match the point on the top curve to the edge of the laurel wreath curves down and joins then we've got this one here match the point curve down curve to the edge the center sorry and finally you've got this top leaf and we can you can see how it matches on this side we can curve down to join come from the center curves up and then finally we've got the mirror matching leaf on this side and there we've got the full laurel wreath down and in and what seemed like a very complex image is actually worked out quite well because we've broken it down into simple shapes and that's all we're going to do with the text the text looks like it could be quite complex but in reality it isn't so we're now just going to draw our griffin quite quickly and because we've got these construction lines we can do his outline rather nicely so he's got these three little points on the top so there's one two the third goes the other way top of the forehead coming down to his eye coming down to his nose back of his head comes out within your construction line and then you've got these little three points for the mane coming down the back of his hair and his neck and then just curves to his bottom then comes down to the center line and then you've got the construction line it comes off and you've got two little points and that's again the kind of fur fluff coming off now from the tail at the back it comes just under the center line curves out go past your construction line the rectangle that you put in and then just curve up inside it and then come to a point and then follow the line and it gets thicker as it gets closer to his body and then you just got this nice leaf shape at the top now his arm we've got his shoulder just kind of wiggles follow the line down just curve it a little bit then the bottom part of his arm it's thicker where it joins his body going to his wrist then you've got these talons just like a little triangle a little shark's fin and another little shark's fin pointing up and then a third one 
little shark's fin at the bottom. Now the hand above just comes up, you've got a curve, and then a talon, and then another talon, a little shark's fin, and it curves, and it curves all the way over and goes down the back of his hand, and then join the line up underneath. Now here inside, because you put the construction lines in, you've got the bottom of his jaw. His shapes are already there for you. That just curves up and you've got a little D shape for his mouth. And then that goes to the edge of his nose and you just want a little whitey lips. And you put, if you, I mean, you won't see, but a little one for his nose there too. And then a little goatee beard sticking off the bottom. Now, where his tummy comes down, you've just got the diagonal line that comes down, you've got a V shape. That comes down and then it curves out around the actual centre point, the cross of our construction lines. And here you've just got a C. And then that comes across and you've got a nice D shape there that comes up to the talon on the top of his foot, his left foot. That goes over the centre line, there's your first talon. Second talon's in the top of the football. Third talon is on the right hand side of the centre line, pointing down. Then you've got just a little kind of corner shape. And then again, bottom of a D. So if you think you've just got two bottom parts of Ds, well there you can see a W. That's how you break it down. It goes up and joins the wispy bits on, of fur on the back of his leg. Now again, his right leg now, you've got there, you've got just a nice curve, which is the top part of a C. And then that curves up to where the talon is. The talon is curved. So you've got that triangle, goes over the centre line. The one underneath curves down, goes back up. And then the third one curves on that triangle that you've got. Little curve under, and that points down to where the football is. And we can just increase that football line out. And there we've got our griffin in. Just sharpening the pencil again, because this is now looks very complex. But it isn't. We've just done all of these really complex shapes. Lettering puts people off. But because we've got these circles drawn from our compass, it's going to make it very, very easy. Now, you can literally start anywhere. And we're going to start, and it's like a clock. But you can see where, coming through here, this line, the grid line, where the B is, the point of the B. So I'm going to draw that there, and we've got our centre point. And if we come up, you can see the edge of that B is inside that leaf. Now, That's that edge point. Now, if we come over to this side and match it, that's the edge where the F is going to start. Now, that's where the, so those two kind of match. I'm looking at it and the F kind of looks like it's a little bit higher but I'm happy with that positioning and now we need to do the same with the A and the C and I'm going to increase this gap it's a little bit close from where we put the leaf in and that's fine because we can adjust things we just put those lines in as guides they're there as guides that's why you do them quite lightly so again we can see here that in this second leaf up that's where the A, the bottom of the A, needs to be. And then we've got the C point there. 
So I'm drawing that line out. And that's where the bottom part of that C needs to be and the A. Now, right up here, we can see where above these leaves, we've got the A. So I'm bringing the edge completely to where I need the letters. Oh, that just snapped and the ruler took the pencil across the actual drawing. So now we can see that we need the E comes up and goes through that line there. So if I draw that line up from the center point now I'm going to go back in with the compass I'm just going to draw a line a little bit further out and that's our inside line and then the top of the E, you can see, is above there. So our very outer line is actually too far out. But all the white space makes it difficult to assess. But when you start putting the other shapes in, it helps you to add them in. So there you can see faintly the outline that we're going to work to with our letters. But by putting the basic points in for the edge of the letters, and now we can do the two L's and the C down here. So you can see we've got this C of club is coming out from kind of just past the middle of that leaf. And then the edge of the L is going up there. So there we've got football, club, crew, Alexander. Alexandra. Alexander is a different word. Crew, Alexandra, football club. And we need to put those letters in rather quickly now. But we've got the guide for where we need to go. So we can come off the leaf. You see the top of that leaf. Where the R is going to go. The R is going to go up to about there. Then we've got the E. And the E comes through the guideline. Then we've got the W. And I'm only putting these lines in to be the markers for where letters come to. So the C will go in that section, the R, the E, the W, the E. So now we've got the A and the L. I'm going to indicate the L and then we've got the section where the A is going to go in. That can just come over a little bit more. Then we've got the E and you can see off this leaf, that's going to go up there. And you're kind of going out like from the center point, like a clock. You've got the X, and that just comes over the tip of there. Then you've got the A, the top of the A is underneath that guideline. So there's the bottom point. You can see how they work off. And then you've got the N, the N comes through we need to just widen that out a bit the end comes through that guideline then you've got the D comes through the guideline comes round 
and you've got there. Then we've got the R working off this leaf. And then you've got the final A off the top to here. And that's where we've got that point already drawn on. Now we start with the F. That's all within that side of the line. Then we've got the O, the first O. Then the second O is all inside. We come to that leaf there, all inside to the right of this guideline. Then we've got the T. T is going to be in this section. Then we've got the B coming down. Then we've got the A. And that just crosses over there. Then we've got an L. And then we've got the second L. And that comes to this point here. Now we've got the C and the L. You can tell that the L is just on this side of that line, that guideline. So there we've got the section for the C, the L, the U, and that comes up through the guideline. And then you've got the B left at the end. But that needs to go up a little bit higher. So we've got the B there at the end. And the U fills that space. So now we've got all of those segments put in, we can now, using shapes, draw in all of the letters. Now that we've put all of those markers in, we can now actually put the letters in. We can kind of just work in the spaces and just work away around in the little shapes that we've actually put in and actually get the letters in in conjunction with the laurel wreath going all the way around. And so we're going to start with this C. And you can see how it fills in the space on this laurel wreath. So if we use the leaves that we actually drew, as well as these lines, then we can completely get the letters in how we want. And you don't have to do them in the direct order. Or you can if you want, and I'll show you how. So we're doing the C, just curving it round. And so that's, there you can see straight away we've got the C in. Now I'm gonna come up and we've got this E at the top. So there's a rectangle. We want a rectangle underneath. And then we can do the rectangle at the back. And then one in the middle. And then you can see the W here, we've got the center part at the top. And so, and the center part at the top is just on the left hand side of this guideline. And so, I'm now marking in the tops and bottoms of the W. And we can put that in, and then it just becomes a very, very simple process. of connecting the tops and bottoms. So you've got five simple rectangles for the W. 
Now we've got the next E. And you can see there how the bottom part of the E is just over that guideline. And then the top, if we come over, draw a rectangle, then we want the back and then the middle. And then finally, we've got the R. And we've got the center of the R and the top of the R. And I'm just doing a little rectangle and then you just want to curve it at the top. And then the kick of the R comes off. I've just drawn a couple of lighter lines and it gets quite close to the back of the E and it's kind of just slightly curved as it comes up and joins underneath the top of the uh, the middle bit. Now I've just noticed that I've done those lines and come down that little bit too far. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to rub those sections out because I put that first line in <clears throat> and we just need to be that little bit higher. So I'm just redoing the E, increasing the height of the R, the middle part of the R, the same for the middle part of the E. Because when we put those first circles in, we had to change them when we put the laurel wreath in, just as we were getting all the spacing sorted out. And I went to the, the C and the E were on the second inner line and then did the bottoms of those on the one below. So again, sorry, just if you press J, you can skip back 10 seconds at a time, 15 seconds, something like that. If you're on a keyboard, if you're on a mobile phone, just double tap to the left or triple tap. So if you go one, two, three, that'll skip you back 10, 20 seconds, that kind of thing. If you just tap 40 seconds, that'll skip you back quicker on a tablet. So do try <clears throat> that out, but sorry about that. Anyway, we're now going to put the letters in all the way around. Now, I'm going to use a piece of paper so that I don't get my hand filthy where I'm resting. And I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to start with the L. So I've got the back of the L there. just comes over the center line then we've got the a i'm going to do the same for the a as i did for the w because we've got this kind of v shape this inverted v for the a like the w it's easier if we just put the markings down and then connect them And then you can see the center part of the A goes across that guideline. Now again, if we do the E, do the back of the E coming down. And then we start at the bottom rectangle, do one at the top. And then we do the center line. Now we've got the X. I'm going to do the same as we did for the A and the W. If you put the little marks in, because you've got the guidelines, they just help. So you put the marks in, you can then do the rectangles, you cross over. 
and join them up. Same for the A. <clears throat> so I just got a bit of a croak. Ah, oh, there we go. <clears throat> just try and have a sip of water. Just a little bit of a croak on the throat. Now, the A goes there. And then we want the centre, you can see, is just on, just below, goes through the guideline. Then we can join those sides up. And then fill that in. Then we've got the N, same thing. We draw the top in. In fact, I'm going to get the D in first. And then if we draw those lines and we can just space it a little bit better. Now, because I've hand drawn these, these leaves aren't exactly the same size. So you can see that leaf is a little bit longer and that's why that letter is now stretched. So we just stretched it out to fill the gap and make it look okay. Whereas this is done on a computer, it makes it absolutely perfect. But well, you're doing this by hand. And so you need, so I've just done the D shape coming all the way around. You need to just space things appropriately. Otherwise there'd have been a massive gap there and it just would have looked a little bit strange. But if the M was too wide, And uh, we can get away with that. That's OK. <clears throat> now, the A, I'm doing, again, the same line in the middle, two at the bottom. Connect them. And then do the bar across the bottom. Now, the R... Do the line across the middle, curve that, bar across the top. Foot at the bottom, curve, come down, and join. Now we have Alexandra. Now I'm going to do club. So if we start with the L right next to the guideline, Do the line for the bottom, rectangle, up. Now the U, we've got that line there. And then we've got that line there. And then we do the curve at the bottom to join it up. And then the B at the end, we do the bar, top bar, bottom bar going up centre bar and just curve the edges and now the C if we just do this follow the curves around do the flats the flats are kind of just slightly, they're not flat like the top of the L's or the, the centre part of the E or the R. You can see they're just slightly angled. And then we curve that around. Now, we've got football. I do want to do, they just replace it all the time with soccer in the USA. How interesting is that? So we do the bottom of the A, the top of the A. I'm doing this on the central guideline. Do the bars to connect. 
than the centre line. Yeah, because they're not going to go, you know, like Crew Alexandra Soccer Club for a different top for, you know, America. Isn't it amazing how language changes words across borders? Absolutely fantastic. There we have the two L's at the end. Doing the back of the B. Do the flat line. Then the kind of center line. Then the top line. And then we just follow the curves out from the outers and the inners. And then the top is just that little bit inside, but we just curve it across them over. Now we've got this T crossbar at the top and then the center line coming down now we've got these two o's and then the f so inside these lines I just keep looking at the reference and i'm just drawing the circle round And then we do the inner circle. Then we do the same on the outside. Now, finally, we've got the F, and you can see we've got the F, and it needs to line up with the top of that leaf there and then the top bar comes down close to the guideline and there we've got all of the outline down in pencil and we've done that just using very very simple shapes so now I'm going to come over it I'm just going to go over the lot with A pen. So remember, straight lines, we need to simply use a ruler. And you can do them freehand. It's just that a ruler makes it so much quicker and simpler. Across the top, the lower part across the top. Now, following these pencil lines, following the curve all the way down just going carefully right to the point now on this side I'm using the inside curve of my wrist and if you wanted to do this on the other side you can turn the paper around but I'm doing this lesson and I don't want to alter the paper so you just have to be careful, but you are just going over the pencil line you've already drawn. So I'm carefully following the line in as smooth a way as possible. Again, this line up the top. And there's the outline down. So that's looking pretty good so far. Now, I think we'll start from the inside out. So if we start with 
Mr. Griffin. Do the outside of the leaf and his tail. And there's a little gap. Now, I know that the points on the top of his head, I know he doesn't have a black outline. But this just makes it stand out that little bit. There's his foot that comes down to the ball. Now, I'm going to go right the way around on his foot. There's his claw. Come up around his knee. Then up his stomach. Then I'm going to do his arm line coming down. Right arm, front claws, top of his head, eyebrow, comes over his nose. He's got the curve coming round for his mouth. Little circle to leave his nose and his eye. Little goatee goes up. And we've got his right leg. All the claws comes down and then it goes up joins underneath now the ball is just a red outline but we're using a black pen so carefully do the outside line that comes down I'm going to do the leaf right at the bottom The leaf that's above it, uh, sorry, to the left and the right of the centre leaf of the laurel reef. And now we can fill in these shapes. Of the ball. And just kind of go each side of the pencil line that you've actually put in. And then we can fill that in with red. When we come to add the colour in a moment. So there we've just filled in that ball as a complete outline. Now, I'm going to go out from the actual laurel wreath. Now you can do this on this side. I'm going up and I'm just doing it a leaf at a time. Now the actual colour on these leaves is this dark blue that's in the border and the letters but it's just easier to just do all of this in pen and ink. And you can see I'm just doing these lines fluently. And if you, you know, you're kind of scratch, scratching it and just doing it little by little. Just get a piece of paper and just practice making shapes and lines. And you can see it's very simple to actually do those lines. But because you've got the line down already, you don't have to do it a leaf at a time. You could even do it one side of a leaf at a time. Just follow the curve up and do it all the way to the top and then you can do the next line because you just you're following your hand in the way that you've just done the first lines 
then you can come down the other the other way from the point just getting different movements into your hand and then start from the top and that comes down And there we've got the center of all of the badge actually in bar the letters. So now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start and work my way around all of the letters, just going over the pencil lines that we've done. Just doing the complete outline. So I'm not crossing over. I'm just doing the outline of each of the letters. So for the E, it's easier to just do all of those going down and then join them up, join the ends. The W, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the ends first and then draw the lines connecting them. So there you can see there's a V. That's like the top of an A. Then we've got a V and then you've got the line connecting the back. So again, this E, doing the vertical. Then I'm going to do the horizontal lines. So they join up and the outline is connected. And then you join the ends. Doing the A, do the horizontals, join up the edges. The L. Put the ends on. Again, we're now on the E. Doing the vertical ends. I say there's no, you don't have to do it in exactly the same way each time. As you go round, because this is curved, tops of the axes. Got that kind of point shape. There's a V. There's the top of an A. There's that side point. Top and bottoms of the A, the horizontal. Then we do the edges. The N, do the tops. Then do the bars. Back of the D, inside, inside shape. Then we curve that around and join it up. Back of the R. Curve the inside part down to the foot. Tops in the centre of the A and the bottoms. Then we do the insides. And we've got the F. I'm just doing the lines, the bottom. Put the edges on. Then the O's. Just doing the curves all the way around, just following the lines. You see, by just doing them a little bit at a time, it's like if you try and do that all the way round, you can do it, but it's just a simpler way to do them in sections the way that you put them down. Bottoms of the A, inside triangle, the sides. I'm doing both L's, the ends, then the back and the side and the bottom. The C, remember do your diagonals. Curve, curve, top of the L, end of the L. Bottom and sides, the U's. Curve around, join 
And then we've got the last letter, the B. And there we've got all of the outline down in pen after spending all that fantastic time getting the shapes down so that our drawing is good. Now we need to just rub out the inside and then we can put the colour on. Now, just need to rub out the pencil lines that are inside. You don't have to, you can just go straight in and colour it in. If you want to want to colour it in with wax crayons or pencil crayons or paint or anything, then, then you can. It's completely up to you. Uh, but the pencil, especially on the laurel wreath, would probably, well, no, not would probably, it will muddy the yellow. So if you're using felt tip pens or pencil crayons and the, the black of the pencil will actually dirty your colouring in. And so that's why I'm just rubbing this out. Now again, I draw these lines very dark so you can see them. And I have to use this quite tough Mars plastic eraser. And there's lots of different kind of big hard erasers that you can get. Now I've got all of those rubbings out and I'm just going to sweep them off onto a piece of paper. It's the piece of paper that I was using to protect my hand and then I can see if I just need to rub anything else off because there was a lot of pencil and a lot of rubbing out. I just toss that into the bin rather than on the floor. So again, this just lets me see. So there down around the word club up the side, around that R. Around our griffin. Now there we have that done. Now, just sweep that off again. There we go. Now we can colour this in. Now I'm using very cheap felt tip pens. Now you can go straight in. That's that's a yellow. That's a darker yellow, but you can go straight on and if it's the wrong colour, you are kind of stuffed. So if you have just another piece of paper, whoops, you can do a bit of a test. Uh, do you know, I quite like that. So this is the brighter yellow. Yeah, that's a much brighter yellow. So I'm going to use this kind of more slightly darker yellow. And I'm just filling it in quickly, one leaf at a time. And I'm trying to be careful because as I mentioned about the pencil, even this, there'll be some, maybe some pencil left on anyway. But just going over the black felt tip pen it'll smudge some of that unless your pen says it's absolutely permanent you can't go over the lines without it dirtying and smudging so your lighter colors like this that looks fantastic Just try and fill the shapes inside 
and try not to go over the line too much. Just actually fill the shapes in quickly. And that will mean you've got a nice cleaner set of colour on your art. Now again, if you were using paint and a brush, you'd actually put the brush on. If you used a round brush, you'd use the shape of the brush to actually fill this in. Like I say, you can use wax crayons and all kinds of stuff. You know, there are so many different sets of art materials out there. And I've decided to do these with cheap felt tip pens. I've just ordered a set of 50. They will be here soon. This is a pack of 28. So I'm quite limited in the colours, but I've still got a cheap set coming, not these, you know, 300 pound set of Copic markers. So that's the yellow in. Now we need our red. So I'm just going to... Yeah, that's the red that we need. Now, the griffin... I'm just going to fill in inside the lines. Quite quickly. Just filling in the shapes. There his foot is. Coming up on his body. Now again, I should have left a bit of a white line there. <laughs> Just picked up a little bit of rub, rubbing out there. And you got coming up to his head. Remember to leave the white of his eye and his nose showing. Filling up the top of his head into those little spiky bits, his goatee beard. And coming down to his hand and then his claw on his right hand and then we've got his right leg so I'm just leaving that little white line and that's filled in now I'm just filling in these lines that we drew around for the football so unless you drew that a very light line with a pencil you, the black line just helps me to fill it all in so now we need it's a very dark blue this is now I don't think that I've got an appropriate dark blue. So this is going to be interesting. So now, yeah, you can see this is quite a lighter blue. So I've got, yeah, see even that, that's, that's quite a lighter blue. And this is what you need to do to try and create the right tones. So I'm quickly, even though this blue is lighter, you, you could mix some paint and fill it in or you know try and find pencil cranes that match 
you could even just fill it in with black because it is a very 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 dark color but I'm just quickly going to fill in and this is another reason you can see this is a little bit streaky I'm going to when I've got a set of 50 pens hopefully there's going to be more range so I could probably closer match this color and this is like even when I'm doing my oil paintings if you check out my paintings time lapse where the paintings that I do the motorcycles of there's time lapses on there I use about 13 to 15 different colors and then I have to mix them to match the colors that I actually need so rather than having an exact color I have enough colors on my palette that then allow me to make the tones that I need for my paintings just cleaning the nib off a little bit now we're just going to go around and fill in all of the letters there's the R so back to color mixing theory I can remember reading something many years ago and there's lots out there about color mixing theory but it was yellow and blue don't make green and that was the title of a book and it wasn't that saying that yellow and blue don't make green but what it was was different pigments will make different kinds of greens so some yellows have a bluer greener hue to them so they wouldn't be good for mixing oranges and this is what it was about so I have two different yellows that I use one is a, a kind of lemon yellow that's got a green bias and a cadmium yellow and that's got an orange bias and then I've got four different blues that I actually use that make different colors and so we're going to draw you can see on there that's really bright blue and it needs to be darker but by putting the blue down we've got a base tone that we can then come on top of with another color that will hopefully get as close to the color hey up here we go I'm picking up the blue again that will get as close to the darker blue that we actually need so that's all that in so I come back in I'll just do a quick test see that's just not dark enough at all they aren't working so this set of pencils which is very old so if I there you can see that's better oh that's much better this is just a, a, an old 
darker blue pencil. Now I could have just filled this in, but because I'm going over the top of the blue felt tip, I don't have to put as much down and it's just working together. with the pencil, with the colour that's already down. To create this darker blue that we actually need. Oh, that's great. So now Coming right down to the tip at the bottom. Again, I'm just filling this in really, really quickly. The nib's quite flat. So it's filling in a large area quite quick. Again, there's not much left of this pencil, but this set, this set of pencils I've had is, is over 20 odd years old. So isn't it wonderful that it's still actually working? So now I'm just going over the letters And because it's working with the blue that's underneath, you see that's just darkened down in comparison to Alexandra and Football Club. That's now a much darker tone. So we do the A, the L, the E. And if you want this to be absolutely pin sharp, you have got to just spend a long time getting your underdrawing down and your outline. Like I say I'm I'm just doing this to encourage you quickly in your drawing techniques. So there's the A. Now we come down on football. And I'm just pressing on quite hard and it's just a quite a nice soft pencil. Whereas those other ones, those first ones, they're very, very hard and you only get light coverage. Now, I am going to quickly, so this is now a black pencil crayon. I'm not pressing on very hard. But I'm just doing the same, I'm not pressing on as hard as I did with the blue. But I'm just going over that blue now and filling in again over the top. And this is one way of using the cheap materials that we've got around us and you can actually match You can see now how dark that's becoming all the way around. And we can actually match the colours that we want. But we have used three different colours for this drawing. 
Now I just need to come all the way across the top. I'm just filling this in nice and quickly. Just carefully. Just need to go to the edge a little bit there. And on the inside. Now, finally, go over the letters. of crew Alexander Alexandra Football Club. I have noticed that the the commentators have shortened the name to Crew Alex or the Alex. So they don't say Crew Alexandra with no R or Alexander E R which I've probably done all the way through this video. And it's a very, very simple thing. To get wrong. So there's the top. Now we've just got football club to fill in. There's the B, there's the A, the first L, the second L, the C, the L, the U, and the B. There we go. That's the end of that. I'm really happy with that. I hope you've had fun. I've had an absolute blast. And that's how you can use really simple shapes to get your favourite football club down. Anyway, I hope you've had fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's plenty more to come in the future. All different kinds of subjects from logos right the way through to portraits and cartoon characters. Anyway, thanks so much. Take care. See you in the next video. Ted off.